Yo, yo, yo. Guess what? We're here. We're doing another one. Here it is. I'm going to teach you guys now how to uh, make a new tower. This is going to be simple and quick. I mean, you know, there are more complicated ways to do this. Like, you know, I mean, actually making a tower is very difficult. You know, it takes a lot of effort. I mean, look at all this. Look at all this crap. But anyways, yeah, here we go. So, if you got open source, if you have the right version of open source, you may have an early version. If you do, you may need to get the newest version of open source. But anyways, you got this. Got these blank towers here. Now these are specifically for open source use. Yes, that is correct. Open source use. And basically, uh, most of the work is done for you. You can use these blank towers and just customize them as much as you want. I already have most of the variables being set up here in this script. Then you set the range. You could set the range to whatever you want. You could set it to 140. Camera detection on or off. Lead popping power on or off. And the alarm. Uh, this is slightly less important. You could just leave that there. If you're having multiple, if you're using multiple alarms, obviously you're gonna have to set those up, you know. But yeah. Anyways, uh, mo the attacks. Whenever a tower is attacking. Whenever a tower is attacking, it's usually done here in the alarm zero event. If stun is less than or equal to zero, and then here we go. This may seem a little intimidating at first, but it is actually quite easy. Basically, this is the targeting. This is used to f figure out which balloon the tower must target. You can target camo balloons if camo detection is equal to one and then if other dot target is equal to no one or path position greater than other dot target dot path position and if it's within range within the collision circle of the range then that balloon will be set as a target so basically this is how you target balloons you could basically just leave this the same this will target any balloons that are further along the path. Those will have priority. If you really want to change this, you can, but, uh, you know, basically on your own there. But yeah, if, if a balloon is within range, then it will create a projectile and it will throw it at that target. So here, it's creating a dart at the position X and Y. And basically, the dart is going to move towards the balloon towards the target which is the balloon at a speed of 15 and the dart has it pops one layer it has one LP its PP is one so one popping power plus other dot PP buff basically if a uh, this tower is within a village with a popping power boost it will gain that boost and the projectile has a lead pop and camel pop uh, variable which is determined by the tower and whether or not it can actually detect lead or camo and then range and alarm uh, basically this is just how long the projectile exists for so if you want to make a projectile travel further or last longer or whatever just increase this value you probably don't need it to be any higher than like 50 that'll even 30 like 30 is pretty good I don't think any projectiles like I don't think that many projectiles in BTDX have a range larger than 30 you you want the projectiles to eventually evaporate otherwise you know you'll have a bunch of objects just moving around hogging up space but yeah here we go this is the command if you're wanting to change the projectile or something you can do that you can just use a different object like tack yeah that's an object right there boom we'll just keep that as dart though yeah uh 
Hmm, what else? What else? Uh. Okay, so let's just go ahead and duplicate this tower. Make another object. We're gonna name this. Uh. I don't know. Double dart monkey. Yeah, there we go. Very creative I am. And what's different about the double dart monkey? Well, mm, not much. Uh, also, by the way, this alarm, this uh, in alarm zero, it's calling alarm 11. Alarm 11 is basically just uh, the dart monkey attack animation. So, like, it swings its arm and then it calls the uh, dart. So, you could have a different attack animation if you wanted to. You could, like, change that. You could also just remove the attack animation completely if you wanted to. That's also fine. But yeah. Oh, so this is the event that reduces the stun of the tower. So basically every time the tower attacks, if it is stunned, it will lose a bit of that stun. Usually how I do it, I make it popping power times lair power. So a bomb tower will lose 40 stun every time it shoots. And the dart monkey obviously will lose one stun every time it shoots, which is not very high, but still, you know, it's fine. Uh, yeah, we're just going to leave that like that. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to change that to two because the double dart monkey will throw two darts instead of one dart. That's right. And we're going to make him spread out as well. Direction uh, equals... Uh, plus no plus equals seven there we go and let's set up this other one let's make another dart in the same lot come like in the same piece of code and I'll just make it minus seven direction instead and that should work this tower will now throw two darts instead of one dart uh, yep. Also, here we go. Uh, use the commands for when you use the left press button. Basically, it'll call this, which will unselect other towers, basically, and do other things. It's not that important right now for editing. And this is the important part right here. This is, uh, how you sort of, when you select the tower, this lets the game know that the tower is being selected and it lets the game know which upgrades it should display so yeah basically if global dot upgrade select equals zero if select equals zero and then it sets the global tower variable as a number this number each tower has a separate tower uh, variable that it, it's the different value basically they're gonna have to memorize or not memorize like the dart monkey is the first tower so when you select a dart monkey, it'll set global dot tower as being equal to one point zero zero, and the upgrade to that the piercing dart monkey has a global dot tower value of one point one zero. Now because it is the first upgrade, you add the point one here, and because it's dart monkey, it sticks with the one. And basically, a second upgrade for the dart monkey. Will now be 1.2 as seen here whoosh it's equal to 1.2 and uh, this as well um, but this none of this really matters that much because I already set up all the blank towers for you I set up the first blank tower upgrade second second blank tower upgrade the, the left upgrade left alternate upgrade left middle no not uh third middle upgrade third middle alt third right third right alt and basically you can just copy and paste these and that'll work it basically sets it up for you any custom towers that you use should have this high value if you use a different value other than 100,000 it'll mess it up if you're making multiple custom towers you could use like 100,002 or 100,003 whatever works for you but yeah just make it at least a hundred thousand otherwise it might mess with the game a bit I mean this is already messing with the game a bit I don't even know if this is gonna work I'm gonna be honest but yeah here we go we got the double dart monkey 
you click him and he does that uh, yeah whatever though let's just test this let's just test this tower out all right so let's just put him in monkey meadows normal we're just gonna put him in this room All right, double dart monkey. Let's just place him right there, and let's test the game. All right, it's done loading. Let's go. Gonna test out this custom tower right now. There it is. As you can see, it has. It is not just a regular dart monkey. No, it is far beyond that. It is a double dart monkey, capable of shooting two darts at once. We have done it. There it is. Just look at it go. Custom tower, boom. Just look at it go. Wow. But yeah, uh, that's pretty good. You know, we got a custom tower going. Now we'll just... I don't know. Let's let's customize it a bit. And give it a little bit more personality. We can change the sprite. Uh, what's a good sprite? Hmm. I don't know. Let's just make it look like. What do we want to make it look like? Let's just give it a green headband. How about that? Do you want to change that at all? You can. You can make it darker green. I'm not really gonna do that though. find the way it is uh all right let's give it an upgrade in the step event here uh this is basically sets like the image angle of the dart monkey so if the dart monkey is looking at a certain balloon i mean if the dart monkey is targeting a balloon it will look at that balloon basically with this setup here also, if it's able to detect camo, which this is not, then you would want to set that up basically by just copying and pasting that and then writing in the word camo here. There we go. That'll do it. That'll let it also look at camo balloons. But yeah. And this other one is very important. Basically, uh, this is the one that will upgrade it. So if you were using just the blank towers, then you'd use this, I guess. Instead, we're just going to rename this. What is the upgrade to the double dart monkey called? It's called a quadruple dart monkey. There we go. This object does not exist yet, so it's not highlighted. Also, how much is this tower going to cost? Very good question. Uh, probably like three hundred dollars. There we go, and that's pretty much all you gotta set up for here. That'll work out. Like you could just follow the format here. Like as long as you follow these, it'll work out. Like the only one that's weird is the the uh, second tier upgrade because that's the one that branches off into paths. But as long as you just use this that'll work out like I already highlighted it this for you you don't have to change very much just change like the instance that is being changed and the amount of money that is being spent that's about as much customization as you need to do here uh... but yeah there we go double dart monkey alright now we're gonna duplicate this the first upgrade and then we're gonna call this one quadruple Start monkey. We're gonna change the sprite of that. What does the quadruple dart monkey look like? He has a red bandana. How much range does this tower have? More than the other one. He can still not pop camo though. That is a conscious decision that I have made. Uh. Yeah, this all seems fine. Alright, so then you have to change this. Uh, I'm just gonna copy and paste 
this code because I'm very lazy. Incredibly lazy. But we're gonna also duplicate these two events or these two bits of code here. So it'll throw four darts and they'll be more spread out as well. Let's make that 14. Let's make that 14. Actually, no, let's make it 12. That'll work better. I'll make this 3. Make that 3. That way it's all evenly spaced. You want it to be evenly spaced, otherwise, you know, it doesn't make sense. Also, you may want to change this to subtract 4 from the stun because it is throwing 4 darts. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. This should work. There sh this tower should now have an upgrade. We can verify this now. Let's do this. Alright, we back. Let's see what's up now. Alright, here we go. It's a double dart monkey. Now with its new appearance. There we go. And now it should have an upgrade. And there we go. It works. Double dart monkey. It has an upgrade. Throws four darts at once. How sick is that? Well, you know, that's about it for this tutorial. That's uh, basically how you make a tower, you know. I did all the work already, mostly. If you want to do something more complicated, you know, obviously that'll take a lot more work. If you want to add one of these panels, that'll be a lot of work. If you want to, like, actually make the tower unlockable and have the upgrades sort of, like, persist over time, that'll be harder as well. You'll have to, like, edit the save file and how the save file sort of stores data. But all of that is not as necessary this is this is basically how you do it yeah that's about it for this tutorial the next one is probably gonna be custom waves and after that I don't know if you have any other suggestions for tutorials please let me know if you need help go to the discord we have modding channels there ask me a question ask someone who has made a mod a question I mean you know you want to make a mod maybe team up with someone i don't know i know there are people doing that already but yeah that's about it that's about it i will we'll see you all later for the next tutorial in the next video preview on 1.4 i don't know